Welcome to another video of solving PDE using Fourier cosine transformation. I will solve every details showing all the steps, okay? But if you haven't yet watched the first video, then it will be a little difficult for you to understand every step. Okay, so I put the link in the description. Go and first watch that. So let's start this video. So this is our given PDE with some boundary conditions. So our first step to solve this is we have to determine which transformation we are going to use. This is Fourier cosine transform and not Fourier sine transform. Why? Because the range of x is 0 to infinity. See right here the range of x is 0 to infinity. And also ux 0 t is given. ux 0 t is given. So we are going to use Fourier cosine transformation and not Fourier transformation or Fourier sine transformation. Okay. So this determination process is the step is in the step one. Our step two is let us denote the Fourier cosine transformation of u x t as u c k t. Now let us go to step two. In order to find the Fourier transform of this whole equation, this one, we are going to find the Fourier cosine transform transform for this one and this one individually in step two. So see right here, F C, which means Fourier cosine transformation of del u del t, which is in the, which is on the LHS. Okay, so it will be root 2 over pi 0 to infinity ut cos kx dx okay now we are taking this del del t part out of the int integration and this will become what it will become d dt of uc bar kt why uc bar kt because this whole thing is uc bar kt this whole thing is Fourier cosine transformation of uxt now we will find fc of del to u del x2 okay so to solve this integration we will use integration by parts and this will be our u this will be our v because we are going to integrate this one uxx term so that it will become ux and eventually it will turn into u okay so now let me explain this a little bit u integration v dx so u, uxx becomes ux and cos x remains as it is and now we will differentiate cos x so this negative sign becomes positive and k comes out of the integration and uxx becomes ux okay now when we are applying the limits ux becomes what as x tends to infinity ux becomes zero why because c in the boundary condition as x tends to infinity ux tends to 0 and u tends to 0 as well so when we are applying the limits this ux becomes 0 when the limit is infinity and when the limit is 0 it will become what ux 0 t which is ft which is minus ft but minus and minus will become plus ft okay so now we will apply the same procedure integration by parts for this term okay so we applying these we get the result as this and similarly we will apply as we will apply this limit on this term that means when we apply the limit as x tends to infinity u becomes what u tends to 0 and when we apply and the limit uh, x equal to 0 the sin x becomes sin k x becomes 0 so both of the terms become 0 so only this part remains see so it will redu it reduces to root 2 over pi ft and minus k squared uc bar f kt why because this one in uh, this this one along with this root 2 over pi becomes uc bar kt okay now let's go to the third step in which we have to transform the whole equation into its Fourier cosine transform. Now notice that here I have transformed only equation 1 and 3 and not 2 and 4. Why? Because we have already used 2 and 4 in previous steps. So they are not, they are no more needed. Okay. 
so the equation becomes this one it needs no more explanation right because we have already explained it in step 2 so let's jump to step 4 solution of one uh, one dashed is what is one dashed this new equation is one dashed this new this new equation is linear in uc part right so we already know the linear equation uh, the solution of the linear equation which is linear in uc which is uc barred into integrating factor what is the integrating factor we know that the integrating factor is e to the power lambda k squared t so uc barred into e to the power lambda k squared t into 0 to t into the right right hand side since you know this is the solution for any equation which is linear in y right so so after performing some little calculations that is we will take the the e to the power lambda k square t to the right hand side it will become this okay now this is our solution but we have to use a little we have to simplify a little that means here uc bar is given but we have to find uxt not uc bar which is fourier cosine transform so we have to use we have to find uxt using the fourier cosine inversion formula okay so uxt is equal to root 2 over pi 0 to infinity uc bar cos kx and dk okay so we are putting the value of uc bar from this equation a from this equation a okay so put this right here it will become this okay now we are changing the order of the integration because this whole term is continuous which we can change the order of the integration and when the integration is performed with respect to k we can take out the f tau okay so this is our new integration we have to solve this one first see we have to solve this one first but before going to this portion i have to i have to show some steps how this is obtained okay this is going to be a little bit calculative but we are not going to jump any single step so we will calculate this integration starting from negative infinity to infinity notice that there is negative infinity and not a zero why we are going to clarify that in the end of the calculation okay so it's the power negative a k squared and cos bk dk these a and b are any constant terms okay we are going to put the values later okay so this can be broken into two parts because we know the formula of cos bk is equal to e to the power i bk plus e to the power minus i bk over 2 so this this 2 is taken out of the integration so this integration can be broken in two parts okay so we are going to find the first part value of the first part so to find the first integration um, see there is some k squared right here and also there is some k so first we need to uh, turn this expression into square of some other expression okay so I'm making a little adjustment right here if you don't get it just pause the video and observe what is happening okay so this expression will become this term square minus b squared over 4a okay and c e to the power minus b squared over 4a is free from k so we are taking this term out of the integration now we are putting this value putting this term as u so du becomes root a dk and notice that there is no change in limit why because as as we put k is equal to negative infinity the limit never changes so limit of u also becomes negative infinity to infinity and and in the next step see 
e to the power minus u squared is an even function. So we are putting 2 right here and limit becomes 0 to infinity instead of minus infinity to infinity. Okay. Now put u squared is equal to v. So du becomes dv over 2 root v. So put this right here. The, this, two get, uh, this two gets cancelled out. And it, this is the formula for what? This is the formula for gamma function if we write it in, in this form. e to the power minus v, v to the power half minus 1. This is the formula for gamma. This is the formula for gamma half. Right. And gamma half is equal to root pi. We already know that expression. So, when we are putting gamma half as root pi, this pi becomes, this pi comes right here. Okay, so this expression is equal to root pi over a into e to the power minus b squared over 4 a. Now see, for the, uh, for the other term, this in, for this integral, we have a as a but b as minus b. So, we are putting in this expression a as a but if we put minus b in place of this, this is square of b. So, minus b square becomes b squared again. So, these two integrals remain same. These two integrals remain same. Now, we have to find limit negative infinity to infinity e to the power minus k squared a k squared cos b k which is equal to this one plus this one by 2 which is this one itself that is okay now we will put the original value of a and b since we have to find um, we have to find this expression okay so we will put a equal to lambda into t minus tau and b equal to x. So this expression becomes what? This one and RHS becomes this one. And now we will go to the original solution. Okay. Using the previous result, this integration becomes what? This one. Right. So this is our solution. And it is okay if we keep the solution in this form. This is totally correct. So thank you for watching.